there. A few days ago I took my bride for a ride out to Sylvan Lake. We found a nice spot in the shade under a tree along the beach. Sat there for a couple hours reading a couple of books, checking out a few of the pretty young ladies on the beach. Hey, I'm old, not dead. And while we were sitting there, I noticed the water coming in, not in waves, it's a lake, not an ocean, but in ripples. And as they come into shore, they get a little smaller the closer they got to shore. And it kind of inspired me to make this bowl with a, a rippled rim. And just like the ripples coming in on the water, I made the outside one a little larger than the second, and then the third one smaller than that. I also did two different kinds of finish on this, different one on the top than what is on the bottom. So I hope you'll stick around and watch this, show you how I made it, and why the two different finishes, and see what you think of that. Let's go over to the lathe and get some work done. Today's project is going to start with this piece of poplar that I got from my friend Sean over at Trimline. Thank you, Sean. Now it's got a usable width of about 12 and a half inches. This side's looking pretty nice. On the other side though, I have quite a few little pieces here that I want to make sure I avoid. So I'm going to mark it out on this side. I'm using my larger center finder. And to do this, I'm just going to make sure I've got 12 and a half inches close to this edge. I'm going to make sure that the 12 and a half inches is clear of this flawed part. Now I just put a pencil on the center, one in the 12 and a half inch mark, and I just run it around until I've got my line. When it's marked, I'll just take this over to my band saw, cut it out, and I'll be ready to put it on the lathe and start the turning. All right, so I've got my center mark. I've got it marked for the circle. I'm going to take it over the bandsaw now. Take care of cutting this out. I'll be right back. One thing I should have mentioned, that center finder, I've got two of them in different sizes and I got them from Lee Valley Tools. I find them extremely, extremely helpful. Now, I'm going to use this centering jig to put my faceplate on here. I'm going to use a four inch faceplate because I haven't decided how large I want the bowl area to be and I don't want the screws out too far in case I want to make a smaller bowl in there. So now I'll just use these inch and a half screws to hold down the faceplate. Okay, faceplate's on and ready to go. Let's go over to the lathe and do some work with this. These larger jaws of mine have a diameter when closed of just a little under three and three eighths of an inch. I want to make a three and three eighths inch recess to fit them into. So I've set these dividers to half of that, which is one and eleven sixteenths. Now I'm going to put one leg of this on the center mark and then use the other one to scribe a line. Now, measuring this, I do have three and three eighths of an inch, so my jaws should fit in there just fine. Now I'm going to use parting tool to start this. I'll just see how those jaws fit there. Assuming that's wide enough. Oh, I don't have it wide enough for this to fit in there. That'll be just fine. So now I'm going to clean the rest of that out with my 
Cindy Drozda signature square recess tool. I'm just going to start shaping this. I want to put a bit of an OG shape to the bottom. I'm going to be turning at 1000 RPM using a half inch bowl gouge. I'm switching now to my 3 8 inch bowl gouge. I don't believe I've ever turned poplar before. It's not nearly as dense a wood as maple. There's only one way to find out what it's like and that's to actually turn it. I've been told that it's an easy wood to turn so I'll just keep on trying it out here a little bit. I'm just going to sand this. I've sanded this now to 280 grit. I'm going to go to 400. But before I carry on with the sanding, I want to put some decorative grooves, some circles here and in here. When I saw Ellie Avicera do his demonstration at the Portland Symposium, he mentioned that most wood turners want to put three rings for decoration. But it's his opinion that two is better simply because it's very difficult to make three rings and have them evenly spaced, whereas two rings are always evenly spaced. So I'm going to use another Cindy Draws to Signature tool, this being her Vortex tool. One thing I like about this is that it has one flat side and by putting that on my tool rest, I know it's not going to be rolling around moving anywhere. So I've got this turned down to 250 RPM. And I'm just going to put a couple of rings here and a couple in there. sand these rings now and continue and finish sanding this to 400 and then I'll be back. I have it signed 
dated and the species identified, my logo coin glued in, and now I'm ready to reverse this. But before I do, I'm going to put a couple coats of sanding sealer on here, and then I'm going to use Minwax Wipe On Poly for the finish. Once I get this reversed and do the top of this, I do not want to have to reverse it again to finish this. So when I'm done, I'll be finished this side. I'm going to use two coats of my usual sanding sealer, 50-50 mixture of Zinsser Seal Coat and Methyl Hydrate. I'm going to be turning this at 250 RPM. Let's see if that's a little too fast, and if it is, I'll slow it down. I'll do two coats like this, and after each coat, I'm going to sand it to 400 again, just to get rid of any of the raised grain that might show up. I'll be back after I get this sanding sealer on here. Sanding sealer is nicely dried now, and I'm going to be using the clear gloss wipe on poly using one of these stain applicator cloths made into a little pad. I'm turning it at 100 RPM. This popper is very dry, so I expect that this poly will soak in pretty well. and won't take too long to dry. I'll do three or four coats, and then I'll be back when it's finished. I have it reversed now, and I'm ready to start turning the top. While I was putting on the finished coats, and they were drying, I was doing some editing of the video the video that you've already watched and I have to apologize I didn't notice when I was doing it that I was actually running the chisel out to the edge and it wasn't in view so I'm really glad I've got that second perspective so you could at least get an idea of what I was doing now hopefully this will be a little more in view for you I'm going to be turning from the inside toward the outside because if I try going the other direction of course, I would be going into end grain once in a while, and I'm just looking for a catch. So I always want to come from the center out when I'm doing this. I seem to have taken all the chips away from the edge now. I can start doing the rest of the turning.
Still got a little further to go in here to get rid of these marks made by the ends of the screws. All right, the marks are gone. This is deep enough. Now it's time to finish this off with my final turning tool, sandpaper. The other side, the bottom side of this, I did with Minwax Wipe-On Poly. This one on the top, I'm going to use Yorkshire Grit and then Hampshire Sheen High Gloss Paste Wax. I just want to compare them and see which I prefer. So first I'll take one of these little pads, get some Yorkshire grit on it, and rub this in real good. Now I will let that sit on here for a couple of minutes, see if it will penetrate a little bit. I'm not sure if it soaks in. And then I'm going to buff it with a clean cloth. All right, I'm going to use the same cloth at 500 RPM. Just see if it'll work it in a little bit for a few seconds. And now I'm going to speed it up to 2000 and use a clean dry cloth. That looks and feels very nice. All right, now I'm gonna put on the Hampshire Sheen. I've turned the speed down to 250 RPM. It says just to put a small amount on. Let's see what happens here. I'm going to let that dry for a few minutes and I'll be back to buff it. All right, it's had time to dry. I've turned this up to 2000. I'm using a large pad of this stain applicator cloth, which I will mark dedicated to Hampshire Sheen. And let's see what this does. And that is a beautiful finish. I quite like that. I'll just take it off now so I can compare the two sides. Well, there's the bottom of the bowl with the Minwax Wipe On Poly finish, and it looks nice. And this is the Hampshire Sheen finish. And I like the looks of it too. There's a little less gloss to it, but one thing I really like about this is that it still feels like wood. It's got a very nice texture to it. Whereas this side, I don't know, it's a little more plastic feeling. So for that reason, I think I prefer the Hampshire Sheen. Not as glossy, but I still like it very much. And there it is, finished. Hope you enjoyed that. I have a question for you. Someone out there must have an answer to this. The Hampshire Sheen does a very nice job. It's a beautiful finish, but it's not as glossy as the Minwax Poly. What I'd like to know is, 
Do you know of something I can put on top of the Hampshire sheen, some way to wax it, buff it, or whatever, to bring it up to a higher gloss? Now, if Joe is sitting out there watching, he certainly knows. The guy has more knowledge he could pass on to the rest of us than I can even believe. I wish he would do some videos of his own for YouTube. He's got a lot to teach. There's a challenge for you, Joe. Anyway, if you have an answer to that, please put one in the comment down below the video. Let me know what's going on. Maybe a few other people will look for the answer too. In the meantime, have a great time in your shop. Enjoy yourself, but be safe. Hope to come back next time. Don't forget to subscribe and take care of yourself.